We're going to take our talents to South Beach and go to Miami to talk about the Dolphins. And I am one of those people that are kind of intrigued. One of the many people that are kind of intrigued on this, how just how this team is going to do in 2022, because it could go one of many ways for Miami. And that a lot of it has to do with their quarterback, Tua Tugaviola. When you look at their 2021 season, it, it was a tale of two. Tale as old as time, as you know, they like to say in Beauty and the Beast. They countered a one and seven start. Primarily, a lot of that had to do with a terrible defense and a terrible offensive line and two getting hurt. And then they all of a sudden the defense gets really good um, in the back half of the season. Tua starts playing okay, and then they finish the season eight and one. The only loss they had was the blowout to the Tennessee Titans that got them eliminated from playoff contention um, for the season finale against the Patriots. But they benefited from a very good defense, a very good defense, and a generous schedule. Um, until again, that loss to the Tennessee Titans. So Brian Flores, at the end of the season, their former head coach, was fired after three seasons, to the surprise of many. And then he later sued the NFL for wrong for wrongful term- termination. And then was replaced by then 49ers offensive coordinator, who some of you may know, by the name of Mike McDaniel, who has been with Kyle Shanahan for many, many years. For me, he seems like he's like an unknown yet, but yet chill guy to be around. He he looks, he definitely looks really, really, very chill. He has a very good personality from what I've seen in interviews. And hopefully he's the right fit for Miami in the right fit for Tua for what he's for what um, Dolphins ownership is looking for. Now, speaking of Tua, that is the Dolphins' goal for 2022. Tua Tagovailoa has to show this organization that he he is their quarterback because for the last two seasons he hasn't shown that he has, he hasn't shown that yet. 2020 was a little understandable because well Brian Flores was fucking up the quarterback situation in 2021. Well. I don't know what happened there. I really don't know what happened there. So 2022, basically when everything that happened this off season, there's just like with Jalen hurts. There is no more excuses for Tua Tug Viola to fail. Absolutely none. Unless if injuries, yes, understandable. But other than that, there are absolutely no excuses for this Dolphins team, especially Tua to fail. So looking at some of their key off season moves, you re-signed Xavier Howard on defense. Emmanuel Ogba, two key pieces on from last year's very good defense. You franchise tag Mike Kosicki. Who knows if he's going to actually want to play under that franchise tag. And then looking at some of their additions, obviously the biggest one is from Can- from the Kansas City Chiefs, Tyreek Hill. You pay you pay this massive haul. You give away your, your first, second, fourth round pick in this year's draft, as well as a fourth and six in 2023 to go and get another weapon in that offense for Tua and another weapon opposite Jalen Waddle and Mike Gazicki. And also they had Cedric Wilson in free agency. So that's another weapon in that offense. So adding Tyree kill adds a lot of speed in this offense, but it also creates a lot of questions. So, I, I like this move by the Dolphins, but it also it just creates a lot of questions. But what doesn't create a lot of questions is the offensive line because they went out, got Teron Armstead from the New Orleans Saints, so they got a tackle that can protect Tua's blind side. They also got center Connor Williams from the Dallas Cowboys, as well as, as I mentioned, receiver Cedric Wilson. So the running backs was a question mark in for Miami, and they definitely answered it with Raheem Mostert and Chase Edmonds from the San Francisco 49ers and Cardinals, respectively. Um, they also got Teddy Bridgewater from the Denver Broncos, just as insurance for just in case Tua gets hurt again. They also helped, got help in the pass rush with Melvin Ingram from the Kansas City Chiefs. So they didn't lose too many names notable. So they only lost Jacoby Brissett to the Browns and tackled Jesse Davis to the Vikings. And because of trading away their picks for Tyreek Hill... They couldn't make that much noise in the draft or address many of their needs. So all they can get 
was Georgia inside linebacker Tennington Dahl. Who knows if he pans out. And Texas Tech receiver Eric Ezukanam. So another death piece in that offense. So Miami, they're going all in. They're basically going all in on Tua Tagovailoa this season. But he has to prove that he's also all in. He has to he has to process the defense faster. He has to sling that arm faster. He has to, he's get get the ball out quicker. He's got to make, make less mistakes. He he's going to benefit from a better offensive line than what he's been provided with with the, the last 2 years. So the Dolphins invested in this offensive line. They traded away many picks just to get Tyreek Hill. So now Tua has to put in the remaining work in training camp in preseason to prove that come week one against the New England Patriots, at home, mind you, he is also all in on the Dolphins being his team. It's 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 gotta be his, it's gotta be this year that he proves that the Dolphins can commit to him long term because otherwise. Miami can be looking towards the draft next year and shipping out Tua to somebody else that can just be somebody else's backup. Now, there are a little bit of questions about the Miami Dolphins offensive line because, yeah, you have Teron Armstead who's going to be playing a a left or right tackle. You have a center in Connor Williams. They just need to figure out who's going to be playing the guard spot, Um, especially in the interior. Because you already have Austin Jackson, who's pretty good um, at right tackle. But who's going to be at the guard spots? Hopefully they figured it out at training camp. So looking at some of their key games in 2022, it's the pretty much the first month of the season. Like I said, they're playing the New England Patriots at home to start the season. A division game to kick off your season. And then two weeks later, week three, against the Buffalo Bills going to be hot as hell, (laughs) humid as hell um, when you play New England in Buffalo. Then you go to Baltimore to play Lamar Jackson in week two. And then weeks four to five, you go to Cincinnati and go to New York to play the Jets. That Cincinnati game is a short turnaround from the Bills game on a Thursday night. So not much uh, rest there for the weary. So that first month is going to be like a litmus test. And there might be a little bit growing pains for that Miami uh, offense, which will be fine. But at some point, you got to settle in. If you're Tua, if you're Mike McDaniel, you got to settle in at some point. And then late in the season, if you're in playoff contention by that point, if you're competing for a wild spot or somehow, some way, you you suddenly are in contention against the Buffalo Bills for that AFC East title. This could be interesting. Weeks 13 to 15, it's a gauntlet. It's a three-road gauntlet against the San Francisco 49ers, the LA Chargers, and the Buffalo Bills in a rematch in Buffalo. And that Bills game, it, depending on where the Dolphins are, could decide the AFC East. So the, it's no easy pickings for um, the Miami Dolphins. So some of the biggest questions and concerns for Miami – this uh, coming season is one of them is really is a Tyree kill. How does he adjust to life um, going from one of the best quarterbacks in the league and Patrick Mahomes to a, a solid, but a not yet proven quarterback in Tua Tagovailoa because Mahomes and that and chiefs offense was all about speed. Um, it's all about stretching the field, spreading the ball around it's, it's kind of almost the same here, except without the speed yet. So how does Tyreek Hill um, fully adjust to Tua um, throughout the season? And we'll, we'll find that out soon enough. Speaking of spread the ball around, how are you going to equally distribute that uh, that ball? How are you going to equally distribute the targets between Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, Cedric Wilson, and Mike Kosicki um, if you're Mike McDaniel? So how, how is Tua going to do that? So that's going to be an interesting like decision that th- they're going to have to come upon before that Patriots game. So that's that remains to be seen. But overall, I do like the um, outlook for this Miami Dolphins team. 
it's just a lot of it is going to come down to how is Tua going to do this coming season? It's Tua time this fall, and it's, it's his time to prove that Miami is all in on him. And I'm projecting that they either win 9 to 11 games um, this coming season. Maybe they could be a playoff contender. Maybe at um, it maybe at not at ten or eleven wins, whether it's a wild card, or they could win nine games, but mit, like just like last season, miss out on the playoffs. Either way, it's to us time to take control of this team. <laughs>